I just want to give a big thanks to Tungaloy America and uh, also the guys over at the uh, Instagram Chip of the Week page over on uh, Instagram. I actually was the winner of uh, Chip of the Month for the month of March. And so the uh, they have a they have like a little swag pack uh, every month for whoever the Chip of the Month winner is. And uh, how they do that is uh, if you're a winner of the Chip of the Week, at the end of the month, they put all the winners of the Chip of the Week together, and then they vote, uh, the, the viewers and all the followers vote on uh, who's the winner of the Chip of the Month. And I happen to be the winner for uh, the month of March, and Tungaloy had this swag pack here that was the gift for the winner of uh, the month of March. So I recently uh, received this because they sent this to uh, Jeff Wooby, who is the, uh, the local uh, salesman for my area for industrial tooling supply, and ITS is actually the uh, local supplier for Tungaloy products. Uh, so they gave it to him, they sent it to him, and then uh, we, we got together and he came by and visited me at the shop. So Tungaloy just put this nice little pra uh, prize package together. We got a t-shirt, a hat, and they got all kind of stuff in there. There's a, there's a milling calculator right there. We got a bottle opener and a thing for your cell phone. We got some safety glasses. We got a uh, six inch rule right there with the clip and uh, an eye lope. And then this guy right here, everything just fell out of the box there. This is one of those portable uh, chargers, USB chargers, so you can take it with you and charge your phone. And we got a pen right there, safety glass cleaner, and that's about it. But we also got the bag. This is a Husky tool bag that they, uh, you know, engraved their, uh, stitched their name in there. So very cool. All nice stuff. That was really cool to uh, win. I, I won to, you know, during the week there in March, I, I won by the picture that I submitted, it was uh, the shaper. And then um, they put me in for the running for uh, chip of the month. And uh, <laughs> I happened to win. So uh, that was very, very cool. Thank you all you guys that uh, voted for me. I really appreciate it. And uh, something really fun to join in on. All you guys over on Instagram showing your machining pictures, you know, just all you gotta do is do hashtag IG chip of the week and they will see that and they'll put you in the, in the uh, drawing each week. So uh, Susan over at Tungaloy, I had messaged her because, you know, she needed my address and that kind of stuff. I asked her if uh, they could send me some literature, some up-to-date literature, and this is what she just sent. This just got in, so we've got, we've got all of their catalogs now for all of their products. And uh, I flipped through this last night, was looking through all the brochures here. Man, they make some good stuff. And this is their whole catalog right there. So I've actually already uh, spoke to Jeff uh, over at ITS and I told them that uh, I'm actually interested in a nice uh, three inch face mill. It's a size I don't have. I've got a two inch and a six inch. So I was thinking I need to get me a nice three inch. So he is going to uh, help me try to locate a good uh, Tungaloy face mill with the proper inserts for what I need around here. And uh, I'll let you guys see that later on once we get one figured out. But Susan also sent me this stuff right here. This is really cool. This right here is the, um, you know, the ISO designation for all of your tool holders. Your tool holders and your, uh, I'm sure if this one's the boring bar or not, but it's your inserts. I'm sorry. This one is about your inserts right here. I'm, I'm not the tool holder. So this, this right here shows all of your designations for inserts and how to identify them. So that's really cool. We got a, a selection chart for insert right there and then this right here this is a pretty cool this is pretty cool to look at and study and read because this gives you all of your uh, you know whatever kind of damage you have or wear to your insert this shows it and it explains uh, why you're getting that kind of damage there so all really cool stuff so that's it I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Tung Alloy for that and uh, the guys over at Instagram Instagram chip of the week very cool I like the little program that it got put together there all right, guys, I've got a, another project here that I'm going to start on and uh, try to get done this morning here in the shop. This is going to be a shaper project. And what we have are two aluminum plates from a viewer of mine named Nathan. And these two aluminum plates are out of a grandfather clock that his grandfather actually built. He said the way this grandfather clock was built, um, his granddad used various different metals 
in this grandfather clock and these two being aluminum but he also used uh, brass copper and stainless in there as well and the reason he sent these plates to me is he said that the the uh, grandfather clock was actually damaged in a fire that was in the garage and so he's been trying to repair and restore this grandfather clock and what he was doing with the aluminum plates is he's been trying to clean them up just using scotch bright and you can see he's made a lot of progress on this one right there but you have a lot of un unevenness and then he got a little aggressive right in this area here and he got a couple of little deeper spots in there i can tell they're probably you know at least five maybe up to ten thousandths deep there in those areas so we know we've got at least that much to take off he said he just wants them cleaned up you know so the um the plates are half inch thick but as far as the thickness goes uh he didn't say it was going to be any problem he just wants them, he just wants them cleaned up this one you can tell he's uh started cleaning on it but i think at that point is when maybe he stopped and he had uh you know sent me an email and showed me some pictures and asked is this something that i would be interested in helping him with and i said sure send them on we'll put them on the shaper the shear tool always works excellent on aluminum and the shaper and it looks beautiful when it's done so hopefully i can uh, replicate what i've done before in the past on aluminum and make these plates look real good so we're just doing a a visual restoration on these uh two aluminum plates all right and uh, I'm going to go ahead and wash them. You can still, he's still, you can see he's still got a lot of the aluminum grit there where he's been cleaning them off. And uh, he said not to worry about the edges, that he was just going to polish those up. I don't think those are seen maybe. Uh, but I am going to scotch bright this one a little bit. This one's a lot more, uh, got a lot more damage on it, probably from the, the heat you know, of the fire there. I just want to make sure we get a good uh, clamping edge there for the vise. So we'll get them cleaned up and then I'll meet you over at the shaper. We got a uh, touch off established here and uh, touch it there as well. It's not flat, it's got a little bit of a warp issue to it, but it's not bad. We'll see if we can get this side cut in nice and flat and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. Our finish is looking really nice. I honed up that tool and I am using my uh, aluminum tap magic, which is my favorite aluminum fluid. It looks like, looks like we're gonna get most of it flat on this pass possibly.
All right, there's our first pass there. You can see, obviously, the areas that we haven't cleaned up yet. That was really just a touch off uh, with an extra 2,000 right there in this area. And what I've done is I'm just using my uh, six inch scale here. And I've got an 8,000 feeler gauge that's going underneath this end right there. So it looks like we're gonna have maybe, you know, eight to 10 thousandths to really clean it up from one side to the other there. So we'll go ahead and dial in. Um, I wanna take five thousandths, make another pass and then see how it's doing. I found that dispensing the aluminum uh, tap magic in one of my fine tip oilers works really good. So this is one of my small eagles that I had. I wasn't using for anything. So it just seems to be a whole lot easier to put a little bit of this out with this instead of trying to squirt it out of that other bottle that I had. And then I've got a clean uh, chip brush here that I'm using to clean it and just kind of smear it around with it like that.
this was our second cut. I could tell that we started missing right up in here, so I just went ahead and stopped it, moved back over. So we're gonna go ahead and take another five thousandths, and I think that may that may clean this up, but there's a good chance right along this edge it may not. But we'll uh, we'll just we're just taking a little at a time. The finish is looking good. Once we clean it good, it'll really look nice. This has still got the cutting oil on it, so that's why it's smearing around on you. But the finish is just super smooth. I wish you could feel that. Well, I ended up taking a total of four passes across there, you know, 5,000 to pass. It, it just ended up being deeper than what I uh, was measuring and what I thought. There's actually still a, f a few little uh, black marks along this edge right there that uh, didn't actually clean up, but I'm, I'm not gonna take any more. We're gonna leave it at the uh, 20,000 cleanup. The finish looks beautiful. Once I get it cleaned up and get the cutting oil off of it, it'll, it'll really pop. I mean, it is just so, it is so smooth. Wish you guys could feel that. Those shear tools just work wonders on aluminum in the, in the shaper. Really interesting chips here. I mean, they're just, they're, they're as light as a feather. They're so thin. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy out and then we'll uh, work on the other one. So I don't think that the other plate, this guy here, it doesn't seem to be as warped as the first one that we just did. I can see a little bit when I run the straight edge across it, but I think it's going to take less to uh, clean this up, but we'll see. My guess is going to be maybe 10 thousandths and we'll get this one cleaned up, but I could be wrong. I did confirm with him too that he wants both sides of it cleaned up. As I started with it, I was thinking maybe just one side of each plate was all it needed, but I, I uh, sent him a message and he said, yeah, let's just go ahead and do both sides and uh, clean it all up. First pass of the second plate. We almost cleaned it up. You can see along this side here that we're not. A couple low spots. I imagine that's where he was in there cleaning it with the scotch Bright and got a little aggressive and created some low spots in there. I'll make another pass, see if we can get her cleaned up. Some cool looking chips. That's the second pass of the second plate, first side there. There's one little spot right there that it didn't clean up and one little spot right on the edge, but I don't think that that's gonna hurt him or, or affect him in any way. So we've taken the same amount off this one as we did the first plate, so we're gonna leave it right where it's at. And uh, from here, we're just gonna, we'll flip it and go ahead and clean up the other side. Our first pass wasn't cleaning it up, still got some low spots in it, and it was starting to get lighter on this side right there. That was a 5,000th cut, so we're taking another 5,000th. That one probably cleaned it all up. The 
It's another beautiful springtime morning here in Florida. We had a cold front come through, so it's been like 50 degrees the past two mornings. I really love being able to come out here early, get the door open, let the shop breathe, get some cool air in here, especially whenever we get to uh, run the Shaper and uh, have the door open and be able to look outside. It's just always nice and enjoyable. We're back to our number one plate. This is the first one that we cut. Opposite side, of course. So it's the last side that we gotta do. They're turning out great. They're really beautiful. All I had done is just wipe them off with some uh, WD-40, deburred the edge. They look great. You can use a polishing compound on this right here and it'll really make them shine. I think he's gonna be really pleased with these. As I had mentioned before, it's strictly decorative, the finish that we're doing on there. Turned out to be an absolutely beautiful day outside. I'm enjoying standing here, running the shaper, making some content for you and getting this job done. Looks like we might get lucky and have it cleaned up on this pass here. This is the second pass on this side. We got about halfway across and it started leaving low spots just like the other one. So they, they at least they've been consistent. A total of 10 thousandths off of this side right here. Nearly done. Like we made it. All right, we've got our grandfather clock plates finished up, man, and they look good. I wish you guys could could just see and feel this in person because it's hard to show it on video just how pretty it is. You can probably see what you're thinking is like tool marks on there. And in fact, we do have tool marks, but when you're standing at a distance like this right here, you can't feel them. I mean, it's it really does look like to me almost like a ground piece of steel plate off of a uh, surface grinder when you're looking at it like this. 
So really always love the, how I can uh, finish aluminum on the shaper. And uh, this was a, a very simple and fun project for the shaper. This, this shows one of the uh, nice benefits of using a machine like that to uh, achieve a nice finish, you know. Most uh, people would probably normally use some kind of face mill in the uh, milling machine, you know, and you'd have the milling patterns back and forth across there. Uh, you could use a nice big fly cutter if you wanted to, but to me, none of those look as pretty as this linear finish achieved by a high-speed tool on the shaper using a, a sheer tool bit. It's just absolutely beautiful. Both sides turned out equally as nice. All I have done is just wipe them off with uh, WD-40. And I'm trying not to... Uh, it's really easy to scratch them just by cleaning them, even using a chip brush and wiping the chips off. I, I see very, very faint scratches where the, uh, the chips are actually just scratching the, uh, the newly machined surface on there. So I think Nathan is gonna enjoy that. I know there's probably gonna be concerns about the uh, depth now of these counter bores. He did, not, he did not mention anything about those being critical. He said he just wanted both sides of this thing cleaned up so that it would look good. I'm sure he's polishing up all the other pieces that go to this clock so that it will uh, you know, look magnificent and shine once again. One of his uh, you know, family heirlooms. So it was uh, nice to be a part of that project. So hopefully you enjoyed. I've got a little bit of cleanup to do on the shaper now. Got to get all the uh, aluminum chips cleaned up and get the machine wiped down. And just enjoy the rest of the day out here in the shop. Hopefully you enjoyed. All right, see you on the next project, all right?